Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. It's an iconic role that launched the experienced actor into the forefront of pop culture and made him one of the highest paid actors of all time. But as hard as it is to imagine now, studio heads didn't have faith in Robert Downey Jr.'s ability to lead a major franchise and wanted to go with a different actor to play the Marvel hero. This hesitation from higher ups had nothing to do with his skills as an actor and everything to do with his behind the scenes persona. Prior to achieving what is arguably the greatest comeback in Hollywood history, Downey was on a downward spiral, living a life of fast cars, drug addiction, and prison sentences. So how did he do it? How did an actor with so much charisma from a talented family with roots in the industry fall so far from grace, only to rise from the ashes as a true Hollywood icon once again? Well, that's elementary, my dear Watson. So strap into your Mark I suit and prepare for takeoff as we explore the rise, fall, and rise again of Robert Downey Jr. With a name like Robert Downey Jr., it only makes sense that there would be a Robert Downey Sr. Although he never achieved the level of mega stardom that his son did, Sr. was an accomplished filmmaker of the 1960s and 70s, crafting low-budget, underground stories with a focus on anti-establishment narratives told through a satirical lens. It was in these often absurd films that Robert Downey Jr. got his first taste of acting, playing parts in several of his father's films, including his acting debut in Pound, an experimental concept where the roles of dogs are all portrayed by human actors. Even as a child, he appeared comfortable and natural on screen, and his unmatched charisma and ability to play to the camera led to the actor making a name for himself in the 80s. With roles in films like Weird Science and Johnny B. Good, Robert Downey Jr. was proving himself to be among the most talented young actors of the decade. While he isn't officially considered to be a member of the Brat Pack, a title given to a core group of talented and popular young actors in the 80s, he was at the very least one of their frequent collaborators, starring alongside many of them in several projects, including co-starring opposite the queen of the 80s herself, Molly Ringwald, in the romantic comedy The Pickup Artist. Molly Ringwald is synonymous with the 80s, linked to the decade more tightly than perhaps any other actor has ever been linked to a period of time. Her performances in iconic films like The Breakfast Club, Sixteen Candles, and Pretty in Pink assured her status as 80s royalty. So starring alongside Molly Ringwald in the 80s was a major achievement for Robert Downey Jr. However, The Pickup Artist wasn't received with the same same fervent praise as Ringwald's previous work. Acclaimed film critic Roger Ebert gave the film a half star out of four and said, This is an appallingly silly movie, from its juvenile comic overture to its dreadfully sincere conclusion. While the 80s were an important part of Robert Downey Jr.'s skyrocketing launch to stardom, they weren't without their pitfalls. In 1985, Robert Downey Jr. joined the cast of the hit sketch comedy series Saturday Night Live. It was an all-new cast, filled with up-and-coming stars and fresh faces. It's an impressive achievement that most comedians dream of. However, Downey's time on the series was brief and ill-received, lasting only a single season and being labeled the worst SNL cast member in history by Rolling Stones magazines in their 2015 ranking. But it was in the early 90s that Robert Downey Jr. proved he had true acting talent, shedding his image of being just a charismatic pretty face and showing the world that he was a serious contender in Hollywood. This statement was made loud and clear when he played the titular role in the biographical drama Chaplin. It was a more serious role than Downey was accustomed to, detailing the life of famed English comedian and silent-era film star Charlie Chaplin, and it earned him his first Oscar nomination, though Al Pacino went on to win the Golden Statue for his performance as a blind man in Scent of a Woman. The nomination was a significant benchmark in the young actor's career. However, Robert Downey Jr.'s professional and personal life would be derailed, and his image as a rising star in Hollywood would be greatly tarnished thanks to a crippling drug addiction that the actor had been struggling with for years. Downey had smoked his first marijuana cigarette at the age of six years old. That drug had been passed to him by none other than his father, Robert Downey Sr. The story goes that the elder Downey had walked in to find young Robert sipping from a glass of white wine. Rather than immediately scolding or correcting the inappropriate behavior, as most parents would do, he handed him a joint and instructed him to smoke that instead. To say that Robert Downey Jr.'s upbringing was untraditional would be an understatement. He shared a close relationship with his father, but their bond was unconventional, consisting of sharing drugs together and visiting X-rated theaters. In the Netflix documentary, Senior, Downey takes an intimate approach at exploring who his father was both as a filmmaker and a family man, acknowledging that his upbringing was a catalyst for the legal issues he would suffer later in life. At one point in the film, Robert Downey Jr. describes his childhood home as being filled with weed, cigarettes, and booze on a near constant basis. In April of 1996, just three years after his Oscar-nominated performance in Chaplin, Downey was arrested at the age of 31. He'd been pulled over for speeding down Sunset Boulevard 
and once stopped, police located narcotics and a 357 Magnum. The gun was unloaded at the time, but still it was being carried illegally. He was ultimately charged with possession of heroin, possession of cocaine, and illegal possession of a firearm. Although this was his first offense, it was a moment that he'd been building up to for years, and now that his freewheeling lifestyle of illicit drug use had landed him in front of a judge, it would unlock a cycle of recurring arrests and failed rehabilitation attempts that would drag the actor into a whole new type of spotlight. Mere hours after his initial court appearance, Downey was arrested again. While under the influence of narcotics, he'd broken into a neighbor's house and fallen asleep. He was charged with criminal trespassing. It was clear to everybody, including the judge, that the underlying issue was an unwavering drug addiction. And as a result, Downey was court-ordered to attend a drug rehabilitation program, an order that he violated by leaving the program without permission and ultimately wound up being arrested for once again. In the years that followed, Robert Downey Jr. struggled through a barrage of arrests, probations, and prison sentences, including a three-year prison sentence in 1999 after repeatedly failing court-ordered drug tests and treatments. During one court appearance, Downey spoke bluntly to the judge about his unstoppable downward spiral, stating, It's like I've got a shotgun in my mouth, with my finger on the trigger, and I like the taste of gunmetal. When he was released from prison early, after serving only one year of his sentence, it wouldn't be his last arrest. In the eyes of Hollywood, Robert Downey Jr.'s career was over. His addiction had made him unhirable and uninsurable. For a moment, it seemed as though he would become little more than a cautionary tale of the dangers of drugs and the temptation of the partying lifestyle that often accompanies fame. However, Robert Downey Jr. wasn't ready to throw in the towel and count himself out just yet. According to the actor, he had been clean and sober since 2003 a feat he attributes to the support of his wife, meditation, therapy, and yoga. But it would take more than just kicking his drug habit to turn his career around. The film industry is a cutthroat business, and mending severed ties is more often than not a near-impossible task. When looking at Downey's filmography in the years that spanned his initial arrest up to him becoming the highest-paid actor in Hollywood, his comeback can likely be tracked across four significant films, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang in 2005, Zodiac in 2007, Tropic Thunder, and, of course, Iron Man in 2007. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang marked the directorial debut of Shane Black, a filmmaker who would go on to direct the critical darling The Nice Guys and the critically panned The Predator. It was a small movie that made a huge impact, showcasing the comedic timing and sharp wit that Robert Downey Jr. is best known for, a black comedy noir that shined a spotlight on Downey's talents and allowed him to work alongside Val Kilmer. Two years later, Downey played a major role in David Fincher's Zodiac, a dark mystery thriller recounting the true story of the hunt for one of America's most notorious serial killers. The film was a hit with critics, currently boasting an impressive 90% Rotten Tomatoes score, and Robert Downey Jr.'s performance was considered to be one of the high points. Namrata Joshi wrote in her review for Outlook, Downey Jr. is perfect as the alcoholic wastrel of a crime reporter. But while Zodiac proved that Downey still had talent, it didn't prove he was a drawl at the box office. The film was considered a significant financial flop for Warner Brothers, despite earning universal acclaim. And then came Iron Man. Director John Favreau was certain that Robert Downey Jr. would make the perfect Tony Stark. The similarities between the comic book character and the actor's real-life struggles wasn't lost on him. It was these parallel arcs of redemption and climbing from the rubble of a life in shambles to make something meaningful and good that most stood out to Favreau. However, the powers that be at Marvel didn't see it. For them, Downey's extremely public history with drug abuse and arrests were too significant to overlook. Luckily for us, Favreau was persistent, and it was his persistence that finally paid off and landed Downey the now iconic role of Iron Man. It was a gamble, but it was a gamble that paid off significantly, launching what would become the most successful film franchise in history and cementing Robert Downey Jr.'s place in pop culture forever. He was paid $500,000 for his first portrayal of the ironclad hero, $10 million for his return in Iron Man 2, and a whopping $75 million for Avengers Endgame. For his farewell turn as the hero, he received a base salary of $20 million, with the other $55 million coming from ticket sales. The same year Iron Man released, Tropic Thunder blazed into cinemas and instantly became one of the funniest satires of the last several decades. A cross between The Three Amigos and Platoon, the ensemble film was overflowing with fantastic performances from Jack Black, Ben Stiller, and Tom Cruise in an outrageously out-of-character cameo. But it was Downey who received an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor. It's a significant nomination for a variety of reasons. Most notably, comedy is a genre that's often overlooked by the Academy, and Downey earned this nomination while being in 
blackface for the vast majority of the film's runtime. However, for Downey, it was so significant because it marked the peak of his return. Not only was he capable of leading a major film to box office success, but his talents were recognized by his peers with an Oscar nomination. There was no denying it now, Robert Downey Jr. was back. These days, Robert Downey Jr. is an actor held in high regard, both for his talents on the screen and his bubbly, fun-loving persona off of it. The trajectory of his career is one that nobody could have imagined. From a rocky upbringing, to 80s stardom, to rock bottom and then sky high, it's been a rise, fall, and rise again unlike any other career in Hollywood. What's your favorite Robert Downey Jr. film? Let us know in the comments. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to never miss a video. And we will see you next time. And if you like the work Fandom Wire is doing, be sure to visit our affiliate link at Humble, where you can purchase and play games for a great low price while supporting us and allowing us to make more quality content like this. Until next time, thanks for watching.